Hello, I'm Richard Gehring with AE Times, and we're here at the Design Automation Conference with Ian Rabay, mm -hmm. who is a professor of electrical engineering and computer science at the University of California at Berkeley. Uh, Jan is the final keynote speaker at DAC. He will be speaking tomorrow, Thursday, on Design Without Borders. Uh, Jan, could you tell us a little bit about what you'll be talking about? Yes, um, well, the gist of the talk is the following. is um, As we heard in the keynote on Tuesday, uh, there's a lot of challenges today towards Moore's Law. And, right. and a lot of people say, hey, uh, things might be winding to an end or at least a slowdown of what the semiconductor technology can do. Mm -hmm. Now, the exciting part at the same time, however, is that all over the world in labs, people are playing around with new devices. Mm -hmm. Devices at the nanoscale, nanomechanical scale, or even with biological components. Mm -hmm. And it is our belief that those components when put together, can actually create a whole new slew of new applications, very exciting applications, which will have a profound impact on the way the world will operate in the future. Mm -hmm. So the question obviously is, those things are happening in the lab, people show little things. Mm -hmm. What will it take to kind of mimic the success that existed with microelectronics? How can we basically create a Moore's law of uh, bioelectronics or biocomputing and so on and so forth? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, in my talk, what I'm going to point out is that we should try to establish similar concept as what basically has driven microelectronics from small transistors, individual transistors, to chips which have millions of, of uh, basic components. Mm -hmm. Two key issues, scalable manufacturing methodology. Mm -hmm. Number two, a disciplined design methodology, a disciplined platform-based design strategy, which allows you to create abstractions put things together in a predictable mm -hmm. fashion into larger and larger components. And I'll specifically use the example of bio, uh, synthetic biology uh, for, to illustrate this particular point. And, and what is synthetic biology, just in brief? Uh, synthetic biology is, um, is basically it, it's the engineering side of biology. Let's mm -hmm. put it this way. What synthetic biologists try to do is take components like DNA strands, mm -hmm. proteins, and so on and so forth, enzymes, yeast, and so on, mm -hmm. and start building more complex entities mm -hmm. with predictable functionality and in a scalable fashion in such a way that they can build vaccines for particular illnesses, generate energy, mm -hmm. all those type of things. So it is, again, an engineering science to basically or an engineering approach to biology. So how can EDA or EDA-related technology help? Could you offer an example? Um, the, the elements we're dealing with, mm -hmm. in, let's say in biology, are very complex. You look mm -hmm. at a basic cell, you look at this string of DNA, you look at organic molecules. These are very complex entities. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to bring them together, we have to understand abstractions, we have to have models. Mm -hmm. um, basically, if you take the equations that would govern a single large molecule, organic molecule, you have hundreds of thousands of equations, mm -hmm. partial differential equations, something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very similar to what we saw basically when you try to model a complex chip these mm -hmm. days. Uh, with the interconnect structure, you end up with dramatically large sets of equations, not very simplistic visions. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have d discovered and what we have developed in the world of EDA is techniques to either solve those equations mm -hmm. or be using model reduction type techniques to reduce them to scalable models that I then can put together. Mm -hmm. So those techniques are directly applicable to the bio, uh, the synthetic biology world, but I think also is true for some of the nano or mm -hmm. nanomechanics type of space. So do you have some ongoing work at UC Berkeley in this bio design automation area? There's quite a bit of work going on actually. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a center in Berkeley that recently got funded last year, headed by Jay Kiesling, mm -hmm. uh, which is looking exactly at that. It's, it's mm -hmm. looking at modeling approaches, looking basically at library building, mm -hmm. all those type of things, such a way that we have a structured design methodology. One example of a tool that came out of that is called BioSpice. BioSpice. BioSpice okay. is a tool that helps you to model and analyze biological circuits. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a lot of activity already going on. There's a lot of people very excited in this particular space. Anything commercial yet? There's, uh, uh, in terms of tools, not that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely companies that are starting to take synthetic biology to the next level and really starting mm -hmm. to create specific organisms, let's say, to create drugs for uh, malaria and so on and so forth. Okay. But nothing in the tool set that I know of that really is offered by companies so far. Okay, this sounds like an emerging area to watch, though. So Absolutely. It be very interesting. Well, thank you, Jan. My it pleasure. sounds like a very interesting talk tomorrow, and thank you for watching E Times sure. TV. Pleasure.